Hello, how are you doing? I am somebody that primarily likes to read fiction and novels, and in the past several months I've been trying to incorporate more nonfiction into my literary diet, and I have read some great books, and I've meant to make it a resolution this year to read even more. Now I've been wondering what are some of the greatest books of nonfiction that have been published in recent years? What is some essential nonfiction that I need to catch up on? And very handily, the Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction has answered this, or proposed one possible answer to this question, because this is a special anniversary year uh, for this award. This is the UK's premier annual prize for books of nonfiction, and their motto is all of the best stories are true, uh, which is great to keep in mind when reading these books that their stories can be just as compelling, uh, or maybe even more compelling, than some novels. So to celebrate uh, 25 years of the prize, they have created a Winner of Winners Award, uh, or to put it in Drag Race term, a Legendary Legends Prize, um, in which they are pitting all past 24 winners of the award against each other to come to an overall winner, and that is going to be announced on April 27th. But just today, they have announced the shortlist of six nonfiction books, past winners, um, which they are going to judge uh, against each other. And uh, the prize has very kindly sent me copies of these books. Um, so I'm going to go through each of them individually and give overviews of all of the books and why they're so interesting. And I think it's great that the judges have noted that it's not just the subject matter of these books that make them so compelling, but it's the style and the forms of the books, um, which really exemplify how nonfiction has changed over the past two and a half decades. Also to note that there have been some other really great past winners and books that have been listed for this award uh, in the past. Um, so I'll put a link to the Bailey Gifford Prize website in the description below. Um, so you can go have a browse around um, through past years and find some other really interesting books of nonfiction. Um, they also run a really great podcast called the Read Smart Podcast. So I'll put a link to that below as well. Now to start off, I want to ask, what did you accomplish last year? Because in the year 1599, William Shakespeare wrote the plays Henry V, Julius Caesar, As You Like It, and Hamlet. He wrote all of that and more in one year. So in this book, James Shapiro gives an account of a year in the life of William Shakespeare, as well as looking at big changes going on in Elizabethan culture at that time. And it's a wonderful example of micro histories or micro biographies in which an author looks at a very concentrated period of, of time and what that says about the larger society and the, the larger life of the, the figure that they are focusing on. Um, so this sounds so fascinating. And I should note that this award used to be called the Samuel Johnson Prize uh, for non fiction, um, but the name was changed in 2015 to the Bailey Gifford Prize. Paris 1919 by Margaret Macmillan, Six Months That Changed the World. So after the end of World War I, a lot of the major political leaders of the world and a lot of intellectuals convened in Paris for six months' time um, to try to come to an agreement and make settlements to prevent prevent such large-scale war from ever happening again. And we know from looking back in history that that didn't work out, that there was a second world war. Um, so the, the author examines what went on during this period by looking at some of the, the personalities and the ideals and the misconceptions um, that went on around these agreements and dispels some of the, the myths and misunderstandings about what occurred during this, this time, um, which was such a fascinating and vital period of history which really shaped the world going forward. So interesting, looking at this seating chart of some of the leaders and the countries when these talks were going on. Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe. This is such a fantastic 
thoroughly researched journalistic account of the history of the Sackler family, one of the wealthiest families in the world, and their involvement in the pharmaceutical industry and creating the drug Oxycontin, which was one of the, the major contributors um, to the opioid crisis. Um, the, the fallout of that is still being felt by so many people uh, around America and, and around the world. And he describes how the Sackler family um, tried to keep their name clean by adding it to a lot of artistic uh, institutions all around the world and universities and how there's been a long-standing fight and legal battles um, to try to make this family accountable and uh, and protest to try to get um, the Sackler named removed from a lot of these institutions. And um, Patrick Radden Keefe has been one of the, the main um, contributors to this uh, discussion around the opioid crisis that has been going on. Um, there's the great documentary, All the Beauty and the, the Bloodshed, um, which looks at the life of the artist Nan Golden and her involvement in these protests and in, and in that documentary, Patrick Radden Keefe is interviewed on um, this documentary is currently um, listed for um, the, the Oscars in the documentary category this year. And uh, also there's Barbara Kinsolver's novel Demon Copperhead, um, which deals a lot with the uh, opioid crisis. And this is currently long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. So yeah, it's a really big topic. And Patrick Radden Keefe has been such an essential part of that conversation. And this is such a compelling story to read, looking at the complicated and weird history of this family, as well as the tragedy of the ongoing crisis. Nothing to Envy by Barbara Demick, uh, Real Lives in North Korea. Now, North Korea is one of the most secretive and repressive states in the world, and it's notoriously difficult for journalists to find out any real information about what's actually happening in the, the country. But Barbara Demick uh, was able to get access to six individuals from North Korea and interviewed them over a period of many years to find out what was really happening in the, the country. I'm um, looking back in the period of the 1990s when there was widespread famine, which led to so many deaths. Um, so this is a rare look and gives rare insights into um, this very uh, secretive country. Into the Silence by Wade Davis, The Great War, Mallory, and The Conquest of Everest. This book is both a history, a biography, and a great adventure story because it examines how 26 British climbers during the years 1921 to 1924 went on three different expeditions to Everest to try to find a way to the very pinnacle of the tallest mountain in the world and the, the struggle of that, how it was tied in a lot with imperialism, but also how a lot of these individuals formerly had fought in the war and um, how their mentality was really shaped by that and their drive to get to the top and risk their lives in um, such a perilous way. And in particular, focusing on the life of George Mallory and um, his real ambition to, to reach the, the top and, and how he died trying to, to do so. And it was never really understood what actually happened to him or if he had actually reached the pinnacle before he died. His body was only recovered in 1999. So it, it looks at his life, um, but more than this like mystery of what occurred, like issues to do around masculinity during this, this time of the early 20th century and how it really shaped the personalities of these unique and very driven individuals. You can see how cold these guys must have been. One, two, three, four by Craig Brown, The Beatles in Time. This is looking at not just the legacy of the Beatles and the music that they created, but also the influence that their ideologies and style has had on so many different aspects of our culture. So it gives a historical account of members of the Beatles and their band, but also 
in the years after and the effects they have continued to have on the, the world and how their presence is still felt so strongly. Now I really liked how one of the, the judges of the, uh, the prize commented that um, she wasn't really a Beatles fan uh, before she read this book, um, but it made her so interested in the band that she's continued to do more research and look up more about the Beatles um, since finishing this book. And I think that's something that great nonfiction really gives to all of us and, and really prompts us to you know, continue to research and find out more about these individuals and subjects and periods of time uh, that we might not have like had much of an interest in beforehand. So those are the six books that are shortlisted for the Bailey Giffords very special Winner of Winners award. But I want to reiterate that there are a lot of great past winners and listed books for this prize and you can see some of the other past winners here. And I want to point out some of my favorite um, that have one that I've read um, from the past. Um, so there is H's for Hawk, um, the incredibly popular um, nature book uh, biograph biographical account in which um, Helen MacDonald uh, describes trying to train a goshawk over a period of time and the beautiful connection she forms with this beautiful bird and how um, it feeds into this period of, of mourning and processing her feelings about it. Such an emotional and really creative book. Um, there is also How to Survive a Plague uh, by David France. Um, I found this such a, a moving and powerful account of the AIDS crisis and, and the struggle for, for justice and that's so what so many individuals went through and how many people were lost. There is also Nero Tribes, which I just finished reading recently um, by Steve Silberman. This this is uh, such a masterful history of autism and uh, also like the, the many people that have suffered over time because of misconceptions in the, the medical prof profession and amongst the wider society um, about this condition. And um, it ends on a really hopeful, really beautiful note as well, um, showing how so much progress has been made, you know, since um, the, the ages past um, when um, people have really suffered from this and of course there's still a lot of work to do but um but yeah a really wonderful account and then there is also um the most recent winner of the bailey gifford prize which is super infinite by Catherine rundell um, which is a biography of the poet john dunn and she brings so much like humor and intelligence um, to looking at this very unique individual's life and uh, his his work over time and the creation of his poetry, um, but also um, his position in society and as a member of a very large family. Um, it is such a wonderful, very readable account. Um, I just loved reading this book. So I'd recommend all of those, but I'm also keen to read more of the books that have been shortlisted for this special Winner of Winners uh, award. I've currently only read Empire of Pain, uh, but I do really want to get to, to more. I think I'll start with uh, 1599 because I'm actually going to see a play performed at the Globe Theater soon, um, so that'll be really interesting uh, to, to find out more about. Uh, but like I said, uh, the winner of this uh, special prize is going to be announced on April 27th, and uh, that author will receive £25,000. Now I'd love to know if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of them now or if you have any opinions about which book you think uh, should win this special version of the prize. Please let me know about that in the comments below. But if you also want to let me know about what you think are some of the best books of nonfiction that have been published in recent years, um, do let me know about that as well. Give me more suggestions. I'd, I'd love to find out about that. Uh, but I hope you're doing well and reading good things. And I'll speak to you again really soon. Bye-bye.